of course, know Richard Hammond from Grand Tour with Jeremy Clarkson and James May, but he's now got a new sidekick for a new podcast. It's his daughter, Izzy. And Richard and Izzy join us now. It's so good to see you both. Nice to be here. And I've been listening to you. Now I've got you here. It's yes. lovely, lovely. <laughs> I'm in person. Yes, real people. Um, it's such an important podcast for both of you, yeah. actually. And it was, it's, a lot of it certainly was inspired by what we all kind of, it was just one of the most awful times for your family, this devastating car crash that we all were reading about at home, Richard. No one knew what was happening at the time. It affected all of you. But you changed as a person. The family almost changed. And a lot of the podcast has been born out of that. Yeah, I suppose it has much as anything else, though, born out of being a middle-aged bloke. Mm -hmm. And um, as middle-aged men, we're not very good at talking about stuff. Yeah, no, they're not. No. They're really not. Yeah, we do. We're really not. <laughs> but because I was so publicly brain injured and I'm, there's no shame or stigma for me in talking mm. about my emotional state, mm. mental health state, because I've had to deal you with mending to. all of that mm -hmm. and, you know, so the guys around me. Mm. And so I think I wanted to do a podcast in that space about that, addressing it. Um, because I've kind of got permission to do it, and I think blokes can hear me talking about it, and it, it doesn't feel embarrassing. It's not that awkward, oh, why is he talking about exactly. it? It's, you've kind of got the permission to, because... That's the word. I mean, us as a family as well, we've spent a long time talking about his brain, because mm. we had to. We what had better to... subject could there be? I know, it's, so it's, it's the best thing to talk about. Um, but it's been sort of keeping an eye on it, you know, his behaviour, how he's thinking, how he's acting, how he's feeling, because obviously... He recovered in hospital, but when he was back home, that was very much, I mean, mainly my mum, just keeping an eye on him and making sure he was OK and being very open about how he felt. So obviously, yeah, like you said, you've kind of got permission to do exactly. that. So it's one of those where we treat him like a guinea pig. So <laughs> if we can talk, if he can talk about his mental health and we can discuss it on the podcast with me, with guests, then we're kind of saying maybe you can too mm -hmm. at home, whether that's with, you know, a mate, a partner... Yeah. whoever and i think as well um it's interesting having your stance on it is he because as you say you're talking to your your mates as such well, we on the podcast to... and it's a different angle with you yeah. there exactly there was a danger it was going to become an echo chamber of middle-aged men moaning about the price of things and how young policemen are these days <laughs> which is great fun to moan about by the way but um we needed another viewpoint and that kind of came because you were working in production on it, yeah really. and then we thought hang on a lot of what you were coming up with in production would be relevant when we were recording the actual podcast. And actually what was interesting is we thought, you know, his opinion would be here, mine would be here, and we that's kind of where the tension might be and we could sort of argue about it. But what's interesting is actually a lot of the time it's a lot closer, mm -hmm. it's a lot similar, and actually I think generationally and, you know, as a man and a woman, we agree on a lot more than we disagree with, yeah. which I think... I think quite often things get pigeonholed. So men's mental health, women's mental health, you know, older men, younger men, et cetera. When actually I think we're trying to say we could all talk about it because yeah. so much of mental health is universal. And actually you might not have really close friends at the same age as you. You know, you might have older friends, younger friends, or it's just, you know, single parents. Mm -hmm. If you've a mother and you have a son you need him to be able to talk to you. And I think that's quite important. And that's a, a quite an important thing that I think is in it. And another reason for us doing this together is, yeah, it's great looking at a 54-year-old bloke's world, sometimes through the prism of a 23-year-old girl's eyes, but because we're father and daughter, we, there's no boundaries, we can mm. talk about whatever. And I think what's critically important, you sort of alluded to it then, um, middle-aged men, I am one, uh, we're only one demographic, one slice of society, one little group. We're a group that's not very good at talking and at, at dealing with emotions. Mm. But society as a whole needs middle-aged men to be healthy and well. Just as society needs menopausal women, young men, older people, every group needs to be in a good state. So yeah. it affects <coughs> everyone. Mm -hmm. you know. And it is the dynamic, <clears throat> though, because of the, the father-daughter thing. There, there's lots of funny elements where you say, well, you're actually annoying me today yeah. and things like that. And that's comes through, which I, which I do <laughs> I like. I can't the big TV presenter. It's, I, yeah. I yeah. first, regularly. Yeah. But yeah. you find a newfound appreciation for your dad doing this. Yeah. Because really, say, away from the workspace, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw a slight eye roll. I, I, I saw yeah. it as well. I wasn't going to draw yeah. attention, yeah. but I did. I did. Um, do you, what sort of a dad was he at home? Away from work, away from podcasts yeah. and everything else. <laughs> oh. Put me on the spot there. Um, no, he's always been... I, I think it's interesting because, obviously, he was away quite a bit when I was younger. Obviously, you know, because we were talking about, obviously, because I've just started working in media. So it's one of those things where you have to take every opportunity 
you get because you just don't know when the last thing's going to be, you don't know when the next thing's going to be. So there was a lot of him taking those opportunities, which he had to do. And then when he was home, of course, he was brilliant. He was the fool, I'd say, as like me and my sister would just laugh at him. Well, he loves the, the dad joke, doesn't he? Exactly. As he you've is said before, king yeah. of the dad jokes. Uh -huh. Yeah. But for me, it's really nice now because when me and my sister were younger, him working was just work. And because a lot of it was dangerous, they didn't, my parents didn't talk about it. It was just, he's just going to work and that's yeah. all you need to know. Whereas now that I'm a little bit older, I get to discover what work actually was and is. And actually, a newfound sort of awareness of it and of appreciation what, yeah. of it wasn't just you were just living around. in the moment. You were going, well, I've, I've got to work, I've got to do yeah, things. Well, so I, I, a... You'll know people. I know yeah. people who are 20 year veterans of the business that are still, this could be my last job, I've got to take it, I've got to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it is quite interesting that it, it's great for, in terms of us getting closer, it's lovely because you are now seeing the world that I've lived in for yeah. all of your life. Mm. And it's quite interesting with Iz because I've done this since she was born. It's all I've ever mm. done. So you've grown up with TV cameras around you and microphones. And uh -huh. all that. So there's no, ooh, I'm on telly about uh -huh. you're interested in the subject, the, in what yeah, we exactly. do. And it's a job. It's, it's work. That's what it is. That's it's why we it do is. it. And I mean, it's not to say it isn't fun. Oh, it's so yeah, fun. Yeah, it's just it's a different yeah. type of business. Job, but... Well, I, I listened to the James May podcast <laughs> with you guys, which was great. And you can tell that relationship's there, which is so lovely. And we had, we had Matt Baker and Nicola on just a little while ago talking about farming life. How do you think Jeremy is as a farmer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, look, there is no, you can't deny the authenticity of that show. The yes. reason, you know, Top Gear worked with us and Grand Tour for so many years was because we love the subject. He is genuinely passionate about it. Yeah. I think it was a bit of a Just surprise. Just not as good as he is at driving. No, rubbish, but... <laughs> it? But, um, it was He's a bit got of a good people round him. <laughs> it was a bit of a surprise to the world when he announced he was doing it, but I know him well enough to know it is genuine. It's loves genuine, it. yeah. yeah. He's he useless at it. it. <laughs> His heart's in the right place. Yeah. Um, new episodes of Richard and Izzy's podcast, Who We Are Now, are out on Mondays and Fridays. Thank you so much. So Thank good you. to Absolute see pleasure. you. Thanks Thank for you. having me.